Hello, everyone. I will be presenting my paper entitled One's Duty, The Morality of the Duterte Regime. With the COVID-19 pandemic ravaging the Philippines, I believe that now, more than ever, it is important to talk about the country's governance and the morality they present, as the government and its decision-making is what is going to protect the people or make them suffer. For the interest of my fellow Filipinos, the goal of this paper is to determine whether society under the Duterte regime is just or not. I will ascertain this by scrutinizing controversies in the Philippines under the framework of Kantian deontology. I will be using an ethical framework to determine justness as an ethical society would logically lead to a just society. I argue that society under the Duterte regime is not just for the reason that the government possesses ulterior inclinations when performing their duties to the people and the policies produced are not universalizable. And should they be universalized, chaos would surely ensue. So first, let us look at the controversies I will be tackling. The current state of the Philippines is one of a controversial nature, being regarded as a time of backsliding human rights and democracy. Two issues in particular stand out as they directly threaten the well-being of those who are not in power. These two being the president's campaign against drugs and the red tagging of supposed terrorists and communists. So, the war on drugs has been ongoing ever since Duterte started his presidency in 2016, and its effects have only been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. This is evident because as stated by the Human Rights Watch, extrajudicial killings from the police and gunmen linked to them have increased by 50% during this period. It would be logical to assume that the president's perspective on the matter is that less drug addicts would equate to a safer society for all, which would most likely be the case. However, the controversy lies behind the methodology and cornerstone of this campaign, it being extrajudicial violence and killings. Consequently, this brings me to another prolific issue in the country, red tagging. Red tagging, much like the effects of the war on drugs, has only gotten more prominent under the COVID-19 pandemic, so much so that 78 people have died in red tagging-related police operations in the last year, accompanied by 136 arrests. The government claims that this labeling of individuals is a means of anti-terrorism, nipping the problem at the bud, so to speak. Regardless, red tagging sets a precedent of justice devoid of due process, as anyone can be targeted and labeled. So this issue, along with the war on drugs, are the controversial issues I will be scrutinizing to clarify the morality of the Duterte regime. Now let us talk about the framework I will be using to analyze these issues, Kantian deontology. So Kantian deontology is an ethical perspective that is mainly concerned with the reason and the intentionality of an action's agent, rather than the possible effects of actions on other people. The only thing that is undoubtedly good is rationality and the goodwill that is to arise from this rationality. Moreover, Kantian deontology is also the ethical perspective that puts forward the idea of categorical imperatives. Categorical imperatives are obligations which to Kant would lead to certain duties that are absolute. I will only be using the universal law formulation. To elaborate, for Kant, the moral worth of an action is determined by said actions accordance with duty and the absence of other inclinations when undertaking this duty. For instance, imagine a benevolent friend of humanity doing amiable works towards other people. No matter how benevolent these person's acts are, we cannot consider those acts to have moral worth because good deeds done by good people um, can be said to not have moral worth in some cases because their good deeds could be done due to their good inclination. It is only when this person's benevolence is gone, yet they continue to do good things, that we can truly say that their actions have moral worth. So next, categorical imperatives. So categorical imperatives embody Kant's belief that reason is the most important faculty to morality, because through reason, we will be made cognizant of actions that are unreasonable, and thus immoral. The categorical imperative formulation I will be tackling is the formulation of universal law. So this specific formulation is used to determine the moral permissibility of actions by following three steps. So that is to formulate a maxim that suits your purposes, impose this maxim into universal law such that all rational agents will act in accordance with this maxim, and determine whether it is rational to will this maxim as universal law. If not, then it is not permissible. If it is, then it is permissible. So to depict this, for instance, 
Imagine you had to lie one day to not get in trouble. Ask yourself, would it be all right if everyone else lied to get out of trouble? If thought about rationally, everyone lying would result to the death of truthful conversations. Hence, this maxim cannot be ruled as universal law, and therefore is not morally permissible. Now that I have presented the issues that I will be analyzing and my perspectives of analysis, I will now argue that society under the Duterte regime is not just utilizing the aforementioned. It is important to note that Kant believes in the sanctity of human life. Hence, killing for any reason is not acceptable. However, basing my argument off just that will not satisfy some. So I will be delving deeper into Kant's ideologies for stronger bases. I will be approaching this through intentionality and inclination and policies and conceptions. The first important query to be addressed is the intent behind the drug war and red tagging. Is it necessary for the safety and benefit of the people, or is it a means for those in power to further their own agendas? I argue that it is the latter. If the government's actions were truly for the people, it follows that they would act in accordance with the Constitution as the Constitution is what dictates what the government can or cannot do with regards to public interest representation. The vigilante approach to the drug war and the unfounded labeling of potential terrorists and communists do not conform with the Constitution. Hence, it can be deduced that the government's actions act as a way of advancing their own ideals, which is immoral. It may be argued that the government's intentions could still be in line with duty. Suppose that violating the Constitution was a necessary consequence of fulfilling their duty to the citizens. However, if the president did not have a vendetta against drugs and the administration allowed total freedom of speech, would the war on drugs be as violent and would red tagging policies remain the same? It is doubtful, as those two issues have made the Philippine human rights situation topic of criticism for human rights groups and the International Criminal Court. The only rational assumption, if otherwise, would be that the government does in fact possess an inclination towards those quote-unquote solutions, proving that the government and society under it is unjust, as per Kant in Deontology. For further justification, here is another important query. If the maximum violence against presumed drug addicts and terrorists without due process in the name of safety were willed into universal law, would it rationally be acceptable? In other words, if all governments possess the same conception of justice as that of the Philippine governments, would it be rational under the concept of categorical imperatives? From these two premises, it is clear why making the Philippines' policies universal law would be problematic and unjust. It is every government's duty to protect the rights of their citizens, and implementing the aforementioned would contradict this duty. Therefore, the government's policies are irrational and morally impermissible, further proving my point that society under the Duterte regime is not just because the government's actions cannot be considered just. It can be argued that some authoritative governments could be benevolent in some regards. Regardless, the maxim states that violence will be had against presumed drug addicts and terrorists without due process. And since this is to be universal law, governments under this maxim will always result to violence one way or another, making this argument invalid on the grounds of continued irrationality. In conclusion, my goal was to determine whether society under the Duterte regime is just. Since the Duterte regime possesses ulterior inclinations when performing their duties to the citizens of the country and their policies are not universalizable, as it would be irrational to make it so, from the perspective of Kantian deontology in terms of both intent and policies, I affirm that the Duterte regime cannot be considered just. Therefore, society under it is unjust. What does this imply? This paper shows that there is objectively a dilemma in Philippine governance and that change is necessary for the common good. As this paper has deemed society unjust under these circumstances with evidence-based arguments, let it prove to those who still believe in the Duterte administration that the Filipino people deserve much better than what the current government has to offer. It is my hope that after reading the contents of this paper, individuals will educate themselves and think carefully about who they vote for, as doing so will certainly benefit the Philippines and its people. So that is it for my presentation. Thank you very much.